Church, and we are live. So, yeah, if uh, if whoever, I guess, you, you talking to your wife? Yes. Was, yeah, yeah, just go to Mon Hustlers, and she can just search on it, and it should show up. So, um, yeah, so let me go ahead and share it. We're, we are live now. So, All right. Uh, we're just going to, those of you guys just joined, we're just going to do some shares and uh, just hang tight. We got a special guest. Got a got one hell of a guy right here, you know. So where are you, where are you, where, where are you out of? Like Cal, I mean, California or what city? I'm from uh, Fresno, California. Fresno, right? Oh, Fresno, right? All right. So if there's any Fresno folks, you know, give them a shout out. You know, give some thumbs up too, if you guys, if you guys can. Or can you guys hear us? If you guys can hear us, give us, give me a yes. If somebody can just give us a yes here. So let me go ahead and go to the feed. <clears throat> so so we are live here. We got about four minutes, and then we'll go ahead and jump on the show, guys. So, um, uh, hey, congrats on your kid. Um, where did you guys end up calling her? Uh, thank you. Uh, we called her uh, Luna. Luna. Okay. Yep, cool. Luna. Luna. Uh, yeah. Um, that I was actually kind of like part of like because my daughter, <clears throat> we called her Kara. That was pretty close to what you know we were coming up as names, you know. So we'll come up with like I don't know. You had a theme? Do you have a theme? We came up. I mean, our theme was our kids. We were like superheroes. So like, you know, Kara is like Supergirl. That's Supergirl's name. <laughs> and we had Ariel, which is you know princess, and then um, my son, my, my son, we got an Xavier, part of the X Men team, and oh, then I see. Uh, you got the Capcom going on. <laughs> Somewhat, we're jumping around, and then uh, and then my my last son, you know, since I'm a big Batman fan, you know, I call him uh, um, you know, Robin, which is uh, um, Grayson, right, Grayson. So, so that's it. Yeah, I don't have uh, any things for my kids. I'm just kind of named randomly. I mean, I mean, yeah. there are some good origin between the uh, the names, and so we try to do like an intermix between a mom and a. Oh, what's her? What's her mom name? Let's see here. Yeah, lose you. Oh, uh, I must have lost you there for a second. Yeah, what was it? What was her mom name? Yep, it froze. Yeah. That's fine. I'm sorry. What so, was that? Yeah. What was her What was her mo name? Uh, we're gonna call her Goli. Goli. Okay. Yeah. So that matches. You know, right? <laughs> yeah. That matches. You know. So there you go. Man, I'm trying to find the share button right here. Oh, there we go. Finally came up. So uh, we got a few people on here. Uh, thank you guys. Thanks for thanks for joining. Let us know where you guys are from. You know, um, we got a California guy right here. So if you guys are from California, give us a shout out. Say, hey, you know, I'm from California also. Actually, Fresno, right? Fresno, California. So, um, all right. Let me do my shares here. Let's get some attention. Share it to my page. And then we can get the show started. We got about two minutes left here. Um Awesome show tonight, guys. We got a hero, man. We got an American Hmong hero right here. <laughs> yeah, not much of hero, man. Just doing my job. <laughs> Just doing my job, man. That's what they all say, right? Oh, yeah. There he goes. All right. That works. Share. This has been shared to my timeline. Another share here. It's just shared to like somewhere special. Let's share to some groups here. <clears throat> man, this guy's all dressed up too, man. I'm like, can't believe you're wearing a tie, man. Make me uh that wasn't my t-shirt, but you know, you, you have to put it on your flannel, so <laughs> yeah, play the role now. Make me feel bad, you know. You're like you're you're in a shirt. I should be in a tie in me and you. <laughs> oh all right. All right, all right. So, guys, 
appreciate you guys joining. Uh, we got an awesome show. We got a we got an American home hero right here. You know, just what happened uh, recently. So uh, it's uh, it's time. So let's start, bro. You you good? Okay, I'm good. I'm ready. All right. Uh, let's see here. Any shout outs here? Uh, let me let me do it. Let me switch back here. Um, Kong. Hey, Kong. Thanks for joining. And hey, Vam from Santa Ana. Appreciate you joining. And uh, I got a few people on here. So appreciate you guys. Give us a shout out. Let us, let us know where you guys are at. We'd love to know. Uh, but tonight's show is going to be awesome. We got a real American moan hero here. Uh, let's start the show, bro. Uh, this is this is Moan Hustler Show 29. So I want to welcome uh, G, right? G? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Just, just G, right? That's like, correct. All right, cool. So let me go ahead and put your name up here, so then we'll go from there. And dude, welcome to the show, man. I appreciate you coming. Um, you know, heard about the story. Um, man, that's incredible, man. It's uh, 200, 242, is it? People say yeah, roughly around yeah. there. That's what we like, came up with. Yeah, it was like 200 plus, and then I think uh, I think it was just you know I think they updated to like 242 or something like that, and they were like, wow. You know, that's like to save to save lives, like two hundred forty-two. I mean, does it feel anything? Like, do you feel like you know? <laughs> you feel pumped or anything like that? You know? Yeah, I do. So uh, before I get going, though, I'd like to uh, thank you for uh, Chai for uh, bringing me on to your uh, show here, and uh, I'd like to say hi to everybody. Thank you for joining yeah. in. And yeah. so uh, to answer your question, yeah, I mean, it's really rewarding to uh, see. Uh, <laughs> The emotion that it was a very emotional event for me because uh just seeing the women and children and all the people in need who are injured and uh it really brought out the um the emotions out of me and it yeah it felt rewarding just to do my job because we we train so hard uh yeah. 24 hours around the clock um and that's what we train for in these type of events and they, they come up and that's what we train for so it's really rewarding that we're able to use our training uh to save lives Gotcha. And we'll, we'll, we'll dig deeper. I just want to get just a quick question out of that because, you know, I want to know the whole story because, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot more to that. And the reason why I asked that, because I was like a school crossing guard, like back in like middle school. Right. And, you know, it, I was a kid ran through and I, I called him before I hit a car and I was like pumped like the whole year, you know. So for you to be like saving all these lives, like 200 plus, I mean, did it feel like, oh, man, you know. Did you feel like uh just full of energy? Like, I mean, do you still have it? Or was it just like ah, you know, I just yeah, do my thing? I, I mean, I just still get emotional when I think about it now because I still get messages from the uh, families I saved, and uh, they're very grateful, and I'm grateful that they're doing well as well. But uh, just like in your situation, you know, once you you're able to say something, you get that drilling rush, and it it's very satisfying to be able to help others uh, yeah. who are in need. So, all right, appreciate. It. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, a few shout outs. Hey, uh, Linda, thanks for joining. Uh, Adam uh, Kong from Wisconsin. And Linda says, thanks for your baby. So proud to see a Hmong hero. Share share all your wife's posts. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my wife says a lot of things about me. Okay, I okay. Facebook, you know. Gotcha, I gotcha. Okay. So, all right. So uh let's get to know you man appreciate uh can you do a little intro i mean how did you get started uh i mean how old are you you just had a baby right so congrats yes. like what two weeks ago uh two weeks ago okay had a baby girl yeah and uh you called her luna right yep all right and then uh dude so you've been busy i mean you probably all this hasn't even soaked in yet right um, yeah, you know, I've been busy and then I had my baby girl, so I've been on a uh, paternity leave for the uh, time being, and um, that's even busier too with the baby, yeah. So, yeah, I've been, uh, trying to, yeah catch up on my, my sleep here, yeah. So, I mean, you just got awarded this this medal, and then you probably just went on leave right away. Is that, is that, is that what happened? That's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that's gotta be cool oh man okay so all right so let's start about you know like how did you get started I man how old are you I mean you look young as heck you know you're probably like what 22 or something oh we i think we lost you for this second I go but, back 
There you go. So you're back. I believe. So G's at, I mean, just to let you guys know, he's actually, you know, a little uh, internet connection. So we will experience this from time to time a little bit. So his his uh, his connection is a little bit slow. So Sorry, I lost you. yeah. So uh, if we lose him for a okay. second there, then you know he'll come back. You know, it's because he's he's out Sorry. he's out a little bit farther away where the connections aren't aren't uh, aren't there yet. So yeah. So yeah. So you know. Let's start out, man. How old are you, bro? You look pretty young. I'm uh, 33. So 33. 34 in December. All right. Okay. So, so how'd you get started, man? What what got you in? I mean, I remember like when I told my dad or my parents I wanted to join some sort of service. They're like, no. But how how did you convince your parents? Or I mean, is it how did you get started in this? So uh, just go back to uh, back to high school. You know, growing up in the uh, childhood, um, being a uh, minority we grew up in a hard tough neighborhoods and uh i come to a realization that i need to get out of here so i decided to join the military and um i ended up joining the guard actually i want to go active duty but i ended up joining the guard instead and it became a great uh, turnout for me uh, many opportunities presented so uh joined it back in 2005 uh graduated basic training um went to ait and then uh returned back home to fresno and I uh, picked up a uh, job here at the uh, aviation facility at the uh, level of six thousand G, uh, right by the airport. And uh, yeah. ever since then, I've kind of moved up the ranks, and uh, which brings me up to uh, where I'm at right now. Cool. So in high school, you wanted to do this, right? I mean, what was there? Were you playing Call of Duty or something like that? You just like, hey, I want to, you know. <laughs> I mean, what was it? What triggered it? Uh, you know, I mean, just the. Just not knowing what I want to do, you know. I mean, I didn't know if I want to go to college, so oh, okay. Um, and the environment I was exposed to, I just had to give myself uh, away, and uh, so that's why I decided to join. Gotcha. Which and that would be a good uh, decision. Yeah, and and I mean, how did your parents and stuff feel about it? I mean, did, were you, did you have to convince them stuff like that too, or? Uh, my parents didn't think of it out of the way. I mean, they really didn't want me to join um, initially uh, because, you know, joining the military uh, has its own risk involved in it. But um, eventually they came to turn around and they were really proud of me for joining and <clears throat> getting how far I've come along. Um, they're very proud of me um, now. So it's been a good choice. They, they so, it, so there was no resistance at all. It was just like, hey, I want to join. They're like, all right, no, but go ahead anyways or you kind of just did it and then they, it was a little too late or how, how yeah what what happened there uh i mean you know i was a troubled kid to be honest you know so i was in a lot of trouble <laughs> yeah yeah um, just like my star, but yeah i mean my parents thought it was a good choice for me so okay. they supported me all right. way. okay cool yeah you, you know and you stayed out of trouble and here you are you know like you know save you know a few hundred people and you know dude uh on on track to be like you know amazing you're already amazing right here so so yeah those of you who join uh do love to hear where you guys are at uh we got an amazing guy on the show saved 200 lives uh what was it in september right was i'm sorry it, say that again was it in september that you uh that that this incident happened no the incident happened back you know i'm sorry let me go back to my dates here yeah it was <laughs> Yeah, it was uh, September the the twelfth. Yeah. Twelve. Gotcha. Yeah. So yeah, so so you know, we got got how you guys started out of the way. So I mean, how long did that take? You know, you uh, you, you, you say join what two thousand and five, right? And then and then from there, did what military training, and then uh, went back to Fresno, and then what did you do afterwards? Like. Join the guard? Is it, is it? I don't know anything about military, so help me out here. <laughs> All right, so just to explain, so I joined the guard in 2005. Okay. Uh, since I went out to basic training at Fort Jackson, and then uh, from there I went to Virginia for uses for my AIT. So that was about a year process right there. Yeah. What is that? Uh, and then what is that? Uh, what is AIT? Yeah, yeah. That's a uh, um, advanced uh, initial training. So. Oh, okay. So it's just like additional training. So, and then it looks like you froze up again. So and that's where you go to learn. Your As I say again, so we lost you there for a second. 
Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. So that's where you go to learn your advanced training. Uh, and okay, so lost in there for a second, but it basically is just advanced training on top of his normal training. And then I guess uh, I'm just looking at the timeline here that he mentioned went back to, then he went back to Fresno, right? So after AIT, doing your initial AIT thing, and then you went back, right? Came back to Fresno? Yeah. Cool. So what'd you do in Fresno afterwards? I mean, right after that. So I came back and I applied for a position at the uh, Aviation Army facility, and um, I got approved and accepted. And so I started off there uh, working in that uh, as a GS, correct, not GS, uh, wage grade uh, eight, which is about 17 bucks an hour around there. And uh, over okay. the years, I kind of progressed up in advance and I excelled to the uh, highest position, which I'm sitting at right now. Gotcha. Gotcha. So, yeah, sorry, guys. Hey, those of you guys joined, he is breaking up there. Uh, which is uh, which is normal. We knew we knew this coming in because uh, he is out of uh, uh, some sort of uh, connection. So um, he will break up here and there. So yeah, I'm just telling you. I'm just trying to tell people that yeah, you will break up here and there, which is which is fine. So um, all right, cool. Yeah, try me um, instead. It might be a little bit better. What's that? Let me try. Uh, yeah, let's just let's just keep going. See, uh, see okay. if it goes. I mean, hey, we we know we knew this coming in, so which is fine. Uh, if it gets really bad, then hey, we'll, we'll switch and jump back. But uh, we can keep going from here. All so right. yeah, so, the last part I said because I, I kind of froze up there. Okay, yeah, we just keep going. We just keep going, and then uh, okay. if it gets worse, we'll, uh, we'll 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 go ahead and switch uh, to a different type of connection and see how that goes. But uh, those of you guys who join, we got G Show from uh, Fresno, California. Uh, uh, September 12th, went ahead and saved like a few lives, got honored. Um, uh, and then uh, here we are talking to him. We want to hear what happened. So so tell us what happened, dude. You're So you're, I guess, what do you call it? Base? You're at base, and then this, you got this call come in, right? Yeah, so I was actually at my in-laws and um, on a Saturday evening around uh, 1, 2 o'clock, I received a, a phone call from my um, supervisor saying that we have a emergency evacuation. In our local area so i reported um to the facility within about an hour and we started to uh, plan and uh, prepare for the mission so once we got the mission and the grid coordinates we immediately set out to the uh, pickup site which was kind of confusing because the coordinates they gave us uh, were kind of inaccurate and so we had to kind of find our way around and uh, eventually we, we met up with their uh, sister aircraft from stockton uh, we joined together and we <clears throat> showed up to the uh, fire site and from there, the, there's a aircraft already doing a fire, a fire suppression there, and so we couldn't go into the area uh, at the moment, and so we had to hold outside for about 30 minutes. Uh, once they were done, um, we were authorized to go in. However, the conditions um, were really smoky, so they advised us um, about the conditions. You know, we we took analysis and uh, risk mitigate and try to find a, our best route to get into the. Um, pickup site, which was very difficult because the uh, heavy smoke, um, those those tall trees, you know, they produce a lot of smoke and the um, fuel that has built up over the years in the forest um, caused a lot of smoke in the uh, fire. So we tried to go in from the south side, um, poked around a few areas, and then it got really dark. So we threw on our night vision goggles. And, yeah, uh, so, let's, so let's recap there. So, I mean, yeah. I think this, this forest was what, in, in Nevada, right? Uh, it's in California. It's in California. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you, how far is it from Fresno? It's a uh, twenty-minute flight from Fresno. Um, if you were to drive there, it'd probably take you about an hour and a half. At okay, least. so what, east? But, you say uh, northeast? Northeast. So yes. all right. So oh, okay. So I mean, damn. So what? I mean, I think it was late at night too, right? That's what you're saying. Like yeah, so we lunch and got there. It was uh, about an hour to thirty minutes, about uh, near sunset. Yeah, and so, so the site was at uh, Mammoth Pool. That's okay. the uh, site. It's a campsite, right? Because I when I read it, it was like a campsite. Was it? Was it? Or yeah, it's a lake. So there's a campground right there on the uh, I want to say north side of the lake. 
Yeah. And there's a camping ground there. Um, that's where majority of the uh, campers set up. Okay. So I mean, let, I mean, let's let's describe this. I mean, you. I think. I mean, what kind of chopper was it? So uh, we're finding a UH-60 uh, Blackhawk uh, Mike model, and our other aircraft from Stockton was a CH-47 uh, Chinook. Okay, which one are you in? I was in the uh, UH-60. UH, yeah. Yep, so Blackhawk. How many? How many? How many people were in there? Uh, so as far as crews goes, it's just uh, two pilots and myself in the back. So three crew members total. Oh, okay. Um, the four, the Chinook uh, carries uh, four. So they have two pilots, a flight engineer, and a, um, a crew chief. Okay. So that, yeah. So let's describe. I mean, let's describe your title because, I mean, I have no military <laughs> experience or anything okay. like that. So like, what's your title, by the way? Can you? Can you? So it's gonna be a little confusing here because I'm in a transition phase right now. Um, yeah. So initially, I was a staff sergeant, and I am a uh, non rated flight instructor out of Fresno. Um, so recently during the summer, I went to uh, Warrant Officer Candidate School. I graduated and I took my Warrant Officer Commission as a W-1. And so yeah. it gets kind of confusing when they hear a Warrant Officer crew in the back as a crew chief because that normally doesn't happen. But uh, because yeah. I'm a uh, federal technician, I'm flying under my federal technician status. And so it gets confusing there. But as of now, I'm a uh, Warrant Officer. Okay, all right. So. So what, what was your job, and I mean, what did you do in the chopper? Hey, what is what was your role there? So uh, primary duties in the aircraft will be uh, responsibility for the airframe, monitoring the aircraft systems, uh, obstacle clearance, and anything in the back, um, cargo, low security, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So I mean, I mean, are you guys? strapped in a seat or i mean how does it work i mean i'm seeing all these movies and you guys are just strapped in like a little line is that is that how it works or you it, that's how i envision yourself in the back yeah so uh <laughs> our seat has a four-part harness uh where we strap in and it has an extended uh seat belt where we can actually stick out and um it's just like a nursery you can hang out the aircraft uh, no problem if you need to lock yourself in you just come back to the aircraft and lock yourself in so it's pretty safe yeah cool yeah. Okay. It's exactly how you envision it. So that's pretty cool. All right. So, so, so you got the call. You guys went in. It was already. It was kind of dark. You flipped on your night vision. I mean, I mean, was it bad? Was it like, you just like visibility? You couldn't see anything. Or was it like? I mean, describe that. All right. So the visibility um, was pretty bad. Um, probably about a quarter mile of vis, which is really bad for uh, aircraft to be flying um, out there. Uh, smoke wise, the smoke was pretty bad itself. You know, I started to get burning in my eyes, a little bit nauseous, but it wasn't too crazy. Um, also, the lighting from the fire actually helped us illuminate the or help the terrain illuminate, and uh, that's what we use the uh, the fire to actually navigate into the canyon and through the canyon to the lake site. So without the fire, we wouldn't have been able to navigate ourselves to the uh, pickup site through uh, the smoke. Gotcha. So that's me, I, I guess. How would you know? I guess how would you know it, where it began, or, or so? I mean, how do I mean? I, <clears throat> how do you guys know? I mean, how, how do you know? So I'm assuming they, the people on the bottom, were calling in, say, "Hey, we need help," right? And then that somehow that gets relayed to you guys somehow, right? How does that work? All right. So normally uh, everything is done through uh, local law enforcement. So from my understanding, um, and this is just a story I heard, was. Um, the local county sheriff and rescue they received the the calls and the uh and so usually with a report or support from the military it has to go through state to get approved and so uh, the state will approve it once the state approves it the governor approves it we can uh they can launch the military to uh, resources out to facilitate those uh, emergency rescues okay so I mean, how do you <clears throat> so i'm assuming they call 911 right and then all right, they're like, all right, we need to get resources out there a ASAP. So, I mean, you guys got approved. How do you go out? I mean, who's giving you the coordinates, I guess? Or are you just flying blindly just to, I mean, I guess, is that, is that how it works? And you're just seeing that of night vision or something? How is it working? No, so, uh, we actually received great coordinates from our higher-ups and um, all the intel that we received. We did get some great coordinates. However, some of those great coordinates um, were inaccurate. It took us to different points. 
uh, around the lake. And so there was nobody in those grid coordinates. And so we actually just, based off what the set said, there's people at that pole ramp, and that's where we uh, we pulled our GPS, and that's where we locked on, and we tried to go there, and that's where we found everybody. And so it just so happened to uh, be coincidence, you know, because we received four different grid coordinates. Oh, gotcha. I mean, can you, I mean, how are you seeing them from the night vision? Yeah, you can see the uh, personnel with the night vision goggles. Actually, you don't really see them. Yeah. So uh, we use the GPS to get us near the area. And then uh, as we start to get closer, we can start to pick up the uh, terrain features. And with our training, we kind of, we have experience and we can pick out terrain features and pick out and know what they are. are. So just like lakes, you know, normally there's nothing in the lakes. So it'll be pitch black. Uh, terrains such as woods will, uh, yeah. will have like uh, conifers trees. That can stick out and so as the moon or the lighting illuminates you can kind of see those uh silhouettes so is it just like uh you know how you see like you know those uh those cop police chapters like chasing these is it just is it just are you seeing it just like that um so the law enforcement i'm not sure if they use uh night vision goggles they use ir for for sure but uh okay. we don't use ir on our airframe specific, uh, particularly but uh we have night vision gold so it's like a green luminescent yeah. yeah, you see like monochromatic green, which is just like a green, a sh different shades of green and black. Oh, okay. So, so I don't know if you've seen uh, military movies uh, yeah. from Hollywood, but that's the best I can do to explain it. Oh, okay. So, all right, cool. So, so you don't awesome. actually see any color. All right. So, um, <laughs> so uh, guys, thanks for, uh, thanks. I mean, I got a few people on here. Uh, <clears throat> appreciate you guys. You guys have any questions? Uh, you feel free to ask, you know, we got a, 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 a Hmong American hero right here, you know, <laughs> so out of uh, Fresno, California. So if you guys have any question, man, uh, go and jot it down. Love, love to hear where you guys are at. Uh, we got a few uh, California people here uh, in Wisconsin. Uh, we get we have a Florida representative, you know, here, you know, just we'll give you guys a shout out, you know, and we see a Wisconsin right here. Let's see, Kong, Kong says he's from Wisconsin, so um let us know but uh geez from uh fresno and uh i mean geez how, how long has it been that you've been you've been doing this out of fresno when you came back so i'm the uh, bar for a year now so you're sorry you're breaking that what was that again i've been in the california national guard for 15 years 15 years holy cow so is this like does it get any is it all i mean i know California gets fired all the time. Is it always like this? I mean, um, yeah, it's always like this, but uh, this particular mission was very different due to the uh, lives at risk. Uh, we do a lot of firefighting annually. You know, we train in year in, year out, and we do firefighting on an annual basis. Yeah. Um, however, this particular event was very different due to the uh, lives involved. So, like, I mean, I mean, have you saved other folks before, or is this your first uh, time? No, we we say people before, but uh, they weren't in imminent in, imminent danger before. Yeah. Um, we picked them up from safe uh, locations. Uh, however, this one's just very different because the fire was right up on the lake. Oh, so yeah. So describe it. So how were were they trapped, or were they just like what? I mean, what what led to the situation? I mean, I'm assuming there's a fire. You can just kind of like go the opposite direction. Was it was it in a valley or something like that, or what happened? Yeah, so if you look at the uh, geographic location of Mammoth Pool, um, the fire surrounded the lake completely, so all the campers and anybody in the immediate area had nowhere to go. And there's there's only one road in and out from that lake, and so everybody that was trapped had to make their way to the lake and the boat ramp. And so once we got there, uh, we seen people on the other side of the lake that were being uh, helped by uh, other civilians uh, on the boat and transported to the boat ramp. That's where everybody collectively gathered up uh, for rescue. Yeah. So, so would you? Did you guys? How did you guys land? I mean, or did you get uh, land? So there was enough space for uh, us to land the boat ramp one at a time. The uh, initially the forty-seven, yeah, uh, landed first because they got there first before we did. We were trailing behind them, and so they landed there. And then once they pick up, um, that left room for us to come in and pick up the rest of the uh, passengers. So to clarify, you land on the boat ramp. Uh, yes, on the concrete boat ramp. Oh, okay. Wow. I mean, I, I mean, I'm just visioning like a small boat ramp, but it must be a big boat ramp. 
you know? Uh, it's not that big. It's it's a normal size boat ramp. Okay. And then we was rushed in, I guess. Wow. Okay. So, um, damn. So, let's just see if you got any questions, man. Uh, I got a few questions so far. Uh, yeah, I see some here on the feed here. <laughs> So we'll, we'll hold out. Those are those those are questions for later. But uh, yeah, so uh, um, dude, um, so uh, so when I was reading your story, right, and I was like, man, so they told you guys not to go in, right? So I'm, I'm here, I'm here reading it, and they told you guys don't go back in, and you guys went back in, right? Is that is that bad? It's like it's kind of like you're. You know, and you're part of the military, you know, it's like, oh, do you get like court martial or something like that for not listening to their orders or something like that? You know, it, how did that how did that work out? Uh, so, you know, the to story telephone works, you know, stuff gets kind of blown out of proportion, but we were highly advised of the conditions. Um, it was very unsafe. And yeah. but I mean, we in the military we always train to mitigate risk and we did the best we can as a crew to mitigate the risk. And we. Um, took the most conservative approach to go in and save the people. So, I mean, our um, commanders, they were very proud and happy of what we did and the actions that we took. So, there so was what? a reprimand. We didn't get reprimanded. <laughs> so, what? <laughs> so we did not get reprimanded. You won't get reprimanded? Or you may get reprimanded, right? No, we did not. We did not. Okay. So, it was kind of like, I mean, I mean, I'm sure I'm sure there's a trust factor to it, and you guys probably were like on the radio saying, "Hey, you know, I think we can do this, right?" or something like that. That went on, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, our commander trusted uh, trusted us, uh, and so he informed us, "Hey, if we can't go in, we will go back in as many times as we can to save as many people." Yeah, and so we we, did that. Uh, we went out three times. Each aircraft went out three times, and we were able to pick up all 243 people from that site. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, dude, that's awesome. I appreciate you guys. Uh, uh, thanks. Thanks for serving, man. You guys give him thumbs up. Uh, can you guys? Can we get some thumbs up on this guy or some some hearts? Right. You know. You know, it's like I I know there's a lot of guys on here uh, love to just just to see you guys. Just give him thumbs up, man. That's thanks for doing this. This is like amazing you know 200, 200 like 242 when i read it, it was 242 lives um that's a lot i mean saving one life is is already like uh <clears throat> like amazing but you guys went ahead and saved 240 but it, the people that were there were they like just like I mean, what was the look on their face when you guys got there I mean, so my experience from when i got there my uh, initial landing or first landing the uh site was very unorganized um there's no local or official law enforcement there to be in charge. So some guys um, took in charge. Uh, we told them, hey, we need to take the uh, injured personnel, women and children um, after and then anybody else who's uh, willing and able to uh, last because uh, we got to make sure that the attention gets the uh, medical help ASAP. So that's what those guys on the ground did. They did their best to uh, organize um, the people in that order. And as we came in and out, there are more people showing up from the, from the wood lines. And wow, so, I love that. So, so you're saying there is some sort of order, right? Like the Titanic. When you get there, women, kids first, right? <laughs> yeah. So we we chose anybody who had medical who needed medical attention first. Yeah. Uh, because their life is more at risk, and yeah. then we'll take on the uh, women with children, and then so, anybody else afterwards. So, are you there going, you, you get in, or something like that, or is it just like guys, you know? I mean, is it? I mean, I'm sure it was. Was it calm or was it like, you know, well, how was it? It was a uh, very chaotic uh, initially because um, we kind of got bombarded with the uh, person approaching the aircraft, and so, I mean, the helicopter is so loud we can't even communicate with them. So I had to like take everybody away from the aircraft real quick and uh, just kind of point and grab people as I needed, and uh, left a little note for one of the guys that that's what we want, and so um, on our return trip, that's what they organized for us for us our second and third leg. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. So I see how that goes. Great. And I mean, uh, uh, how long was the, how long was the flyback? I guess, what do you guys call it? You know, to come uh, so back? the uh, flyback was roughly about 20 to 25 minutes. Um, and then we filled up and uh, went right back out. So, um, I think I flew uh, around, 
I can't remember exactly, but around five hours that night. So operations went all the way up till uh, 2 a.m. in the morning, and that's when we uh, officially shut down. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Cool. So uh, let's just answer some questions right here. Like uh, I think Christopher was saying, what branch did you take your commission commission in? Didn't did, what, do you know? Do you know how to answer that one? I do. So I took my uh, commission with the uh, Army National Guard. And so it kind of works uh, weird with the Army National Guard because you have to take a active duty commission uh, or appointment, and then you have to sign another piece of paper, uh, oath of enlistment or oath of appointment with the Guard Wall. Okay. All right. Uh, must be another. But, uh, I'm sorry, Army. Okay. I mean, this is kind of. It must be another military guy asking that question, right? Uh, I'm assuming so. Can you demonstrate? Can you demonstrate some military communications during your rescue search? <laughs> what is sure. particular? <laughs> Not sure. Key saying, Key, what do you what do you mean by that? I, I don't know. Is he talking about communication, like just saying, "Hey, you know, ten four or something like that"? <laughs> Not sure. He's That's saying so here. Uh, Johnny, John, John, John Yang says, "Salute." Uh, what's for your service? Okay, Shredder goes. Thank you, Shredder goes. Hey, uh, that's for your service, but I, I think he meant uh, thanks for your service. Yeah, I, I guess he did say here. Um, same with Dua, and then Bob. Bob says, "Hey, what up, or <laughs> Hey, Bob, how's it going? <laughs> um, Still waiting for your uh, ballot to come through. Yeah, did did it? Did it it did come through, right? I thought I saw something on like it was on paper, right, Ba? I, I don't know if he can answer to that, but I don't, I don't know if you saw it too, uh, G. But, uh, I haven't got mine yet. Uh, okay, so Ba, we need to get you on the show, uh, maybe uh, next few weeks before uh, the election. Mm -hmm. So just letting, um, just trying to get you prep. Um, so yeah, dude, uh, awesome, awesome uh, details. Um, tell us. I mean, did you expect? Did, I mean, this is you're just saying this is all this just your job, right? I mean, did you expect to get honored in, in any way out of this? So I never expected to get blown out of this proportion. Um, I mean, I would probably expect an award of some sort, but never uh, expected to have a uh, POTUS come down and grant us the uh, Distinguished Flying Cross, which is uh, the highest award in aviation you can receive. Yeah, yeah, it would, would, I mean. Uh, I know you went through quickly on that. Like, what what is the medal? What what is it? Can you describe what it is? So, so the uh, Distinguished Flying Cross um, is awarded to any enlisted officer or civilian with uh, aviation uh, accomplishments and so or act of heroism. So, even as a civilian, you can receive a uh, Distinguished Flying Cross as well. Okay, and uh, do you have it with you? Let's just take a look at it. I want to see it. Um, so here it is. The uh, original one right here. The original okay. one. Did they give you another one? They give you two? A copy? Uh, this is one they uh, picked up, and uh, this was supposed to get sent back to the break. Hang on a second. Let me just say, uh, wait for your uh, your connection to come back here. But uh, give it a moment there. This connection is dropping in and out. But um, yeah, give us a moment here. So yeah, uh, guys, give us a shout out. Give some thumbs up. Uh, you know, give some hearts to this guy. Um, uh, let's thank him for his service. You know, I went and saved two hundred, you know, forty two lives out, out in uh, California uh, back in September. Uh, big uh, fire, big uh, big fire came, saved some lives. Went in when uh, when they told him not to, and uh, saved some lives out of there. Okay, you're back. So yeah, show us the show us the metal again. I'm sorry, I got a bad connection here. Yeah, that's fine. So yeah, let me, uh, let's go ahead and take these these texts out. So there you go. Oop, so that's it. Lost it. Frozen, frozen again. We'll give it a minute, minute before it comes back. Back there it goes. Awesome. So that's the original. You're saying that's original. What what did you say before? You get two or what? How does that work? So this is the uh, award that uh, the uh, president pinned on. Uh, this was supposed to get sent back and uh, get engraved. So I'm still waiting for that to happen. Okay. Okay. So you, so you only get one, right? You only get one. He comes out. He comes down. I guess. Okay. So let's 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 see how that. So how does that work? So 
did they let you guys know that hey there's an event coming or is this like a special thing that you just they're like hey just show up for this so uh i didn't really have a clue at first uh we kind of heard some things um through the woods and uh when my immediate supervisor called me hey uh go get a haircut we're going to sacramento i kind of put two and two to get together because i saw on the news that trump was coming to sacramento yeah and so i kind of figured it out <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so I mean, cool so and i mean i'm sure everybody knew right i mean did you go by uh, yourself or did you guys guys go as a team or i mean as a group or? yeah uh, me and my crew we uh, went up to sacramento to uh, mckellen uh, air force or yeah. airport and um after uh, the d initial day uh, they approved our family members to show up so uh, my family uh, drew up drew up that night and um yeah they we all joined up together okay so so you kind of got a heads up on it right somewhat yeah we kind of got a heads up on it okay cool and then so um all right cool and then i mean you met him i mean uh, did you spend any time talking to him or just you know just him pinning it and that was it shook his hand and that was it uh no we spent some uh time behind the scenes you know um yeah they didn't want seeing in there of course but uh <laughs> 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 so i mean i, I mean I, I never met the guy how is he? is he you know yeah he's cool we spent about uh 15 20 minutes uh talking to uh the president he was a very busy man so yeah uh, we spent some personal time talking one-on-one -on -one. he asked us about the mission and um we talked about a little bit things about um de deployments here and there and he was a great guy i mean i have nothing bad to say about him in person so cool so not what uh, you see on TV. sorry you're, you're breaking up there but yeah so it, it was just quick you know talked and you know uh i mean we knew yeah he is you know he, he is busy so 15 minutes you're in you're out uh took a few pictures i mean i saw the the photos i mean those are nice photos you know and uh uh dude congrats uh let's see here uh any questions you guys have any questions um uh oh yeah uh what was the most dangerous part of the mission yeah what i mean what what was it all right so for us as uh, aviators the most dangerous part of the mission or just flying in general is uh visibility that's our number one uh enemy right there and so with the visibility being uh about a quarter mile or less you know because normal uh, flight rules you know we have to fly in two miles of vis or better and yeah. um with the degraded visibility that very uh, puts a strenuous uh, on the, puts a lot of strain on the crews and so that'll be our biggest uh the dangerous part of the mission because if not we're not able to see we may be uh running into any wires or obstacles um in the route especially finding the uh, low terrain that we're flying in to uh, yeah. pick up the uh, buoys gotcha gotcha all right there you go linda um congo is like, what's it like to meet the pre the president in person we we kind of talked about that but uh i mean it had to be i mean is he a tall guy i mean i don't know how tall are you i can't elaborate in more detail if you like oh yeah how, i mean how tall are you i think he, i'm I think five he's... uh five eight so the president is pretty tall he's uh i'm guessing he's probably six something yeah i think yeah oh, he's not oh, yeah he's yeah from the picture i saw i think he was pretty uh i think he was a little bit taller than you so uh that's cool that's cool um let's see here uh let's see beautiful i guess chris christopher is just responding um all right so uh dude so i mean let's talk i mean this show talks about money right so i mean just curious i mean yeah. did it pay it was there any was there any money in it you know did, did you get any award out of it you know saving lives and stuff like just curious you know so i don't get any uh, extra special bonus pay for this mission here um so i just get get my regular uh wages <laughs> but that medal is a lot more right i mean yeah so i it, think the biggest award here is the uh, satisfaction of being able to help others in need yeah that's the biggest payout right there yeah yeah that's awesome man uh i mean does it does it get written anywhere in the books i'm sure it's in the book somewhere i mean do you when where can you i guess where can you go and find that info i mean do you know 
Uh, I'm sorry. What kind of information? Yeah, yeah, like uh, like the metal and stuff like that. You know, is, is it like okay, this particular day, this guy got metals. You know, is it anywhere? Yeah, so you can look it up. Uh, I'm still haven't finished registering with the uh, Distinguished Flying Cross Society, and uh, yeah. I looked it up online, and uh, there's only throughout United States history, there's only been six thousand two hundred recipients that received this award. Wow. And, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, this award is a uh, class, if I remember correctly, is the uh, four pies award you can get um, in the military. So oh, okay. it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty high award you I, can get. Yeah. Is it just because it's just the amount of people? Like, is there, is there like a like a drop off? Like, if you only say ten, does that qualify you for for that or? No. So the uh, requirements to receive the award it says in the uh, the book here, uh, act of heroism while uh, performing aviation duties, and so whatever classifies as hero the act of heroism, um, yeah, that qualifies you for an award. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Key goes, hey, can you see yourself retiring from the National Guard? Yeah. So I actually have six years of service with the Guard uh, currently. And I signed up another six to extend, um, so I can join the uh, Army aviation, aviation Flight Program. Yeah. Uh, so definitely, I'll be making twenty years. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So let's go back to that question. You know, so there's no money in it. You know, so what, I mean, so I mean, what does a I guess what your title was it, Chief Warrant? Is that right? Yep. So uh, currently, how much do you get paid? You know, just 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 to say, hey, you know, if you ever want to join. And do and somebody wants to do what you do. Um, what's the pay rate on that? So the pay rate for a warrant officer uh, with zero years of experience uh, starts off at I want to say at about thirty five hundred uh, monthly, and you get extra stipends on top. So you get a basic housing allowance, which is uh, based on locality and yeah. other incentive pay. So it goes up to uh, probably about four thousand. But uh, for me personally, right now I have uh, fourteen years and a half or fifteen years of service as a yep. w1 so my base pay would be about five thousand uh, a month not to include my extra stipends oh, okay so yeah just uh yeah man you're just like uh it's i mean i think almost like a firefighter pretty much pay you know but you get all that incentive you know yeah That's we get a lot of incentive pay uh hazard duty pay flight pay and uh so it and housing pay if you're active duty. Yeah. So uh, it, there's a lot of extra pay that comes up top of it, makes up for the uh, difference. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You guys have any questions? Uh, post post them now. Uh, we're getting close to the end of the show. Uh, any shout outs? You guys let us know where you guys are at. We'd love to know. Um, uh, G's, G's actually from California. So uh, any California people in the house, let's give them some love. Uh, I'll let you know who you are. I'm sure he knows you guys. Uh, but bro, thanks for your service, man. Uh, you can say enough. I mean, uh, to uh, have you have you gotten any, reached out from like any of the survivors? You know, to say hey, thanks and stuff like that. Have you gotten you know anything? Oh, I got uh, plenty of uh, reach outs uh, through Facebook and other uh, platforms. Yeah. Uh, so, but I haven't responded to. Some of them I responded back. Uh, I had to uh, get permission from my public affairs office, and so yeah. I'm still working it. You know, so you're the first one so far. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> I, I, and I knew you were. I mean, I, this man is having a just had a baby too, so he's probably like, you know, how much sleep are you getting so far right now? <laughs> uh, about two hours a night, so two hours, and then I wake up to feed the baby, and I go back to sleep for another two. So that's all right. That's yeah, that's that's about right, man. Um, uh, okay, Key goes. What's the most interesting weapon you have ever used? All right, so my favorite weapon would be a uh, Mark Nineteen grenade launcher. That would be my best, my favorite weapon. <laughs> um, Normally, we uh, use a 240 uh, machine gun, um, 762 240 machine gun. That's what we use um, as a gunner in the uh, aircraft. So that, it's a pretty fun gun to shoot. Yeah. But you don't, that's not part of what you do, right? It's, you just. No, that's not what we do. We, we don't use those weapons in uh, the state here. It's only uh, during uh, combat tours. Yeah. Yeah. So, 
All right, bro. Uh, future goals, man. Uh, I think you mentioned already. It's uh, uh, what was it? So uh, future goals right now. Um, I am currently set to move to Fort Rucker, Alabama, next month uh, to start my Army Aviation Flight Program. So I'm going to become a Army uh, pilot. All right. And it's going to be about a year, uh, a year long. So hopefully, I make it through. Wish me luck. Yeah, man. Good luck, dude. It's just a pilot for Chopper? Yeah, for a Chopper, for a UH-60. Okay, cool. I mean, have you have you sat in a chair before? Or is this... Do they let you sit in a chair? No, you can't sit in the chair. It's a uh, two-pilot uh, helicopter, so two qualified pilots have to have seven seats at all times. Oh, okay. So you can't, you know, but you're just watching those guys, you know, from the back, like what you've been doing. Yeah, from so. the back. Well, I can do everything from the back. <laughs> I mean, does it pay more being a pilot? Just curious. It does. Okay. And it's probably fun too, you know, right? I mean, I'm sure you guys have done some crazy stuff, you know? Oh, yeah. It's always fun being a helicopter. Um, we get unique missions that come up. And uh, I flown fixed wing before. I used to be a flight engineer on a C-23. Yeah. Uh, it's a different type of mission, uh, fixed wing versus helicopter. Okay. Because yeah. With the helicopter, you get to go down low, and you can land in uh, rural areas where airplanes can't. Yeah. Yeah. So cool, man. So uh, that's it. Uh, I mean, I, I don't see any other questions. I know it's late over there. It's late over here. Um, but uh, dude, uh, can't thank you enough. Uh, those of you guys who serve, uh, thank you guys for your service. Uh, that's amazing, man. It's amazing what you're doing. Um, um thank you for coming on the show and uh let's uh we do have one more question i didn't tell you this but you probably i don't know if you know but uh since we talk about money on the show uh we do just ask you know if you happen to have a billion dollars with you what's the first thing or the first two things you would do with it if i had a billion dollars billion dollars uh, first thing i would do is uh hire a uh, certified cpa and a lawyer <laughs> <laughs> Okay. What's that? Why? Because, you know, we got to make the, uh, spend the money wisely. And uh, when you're dealing dollars, uh, there's a lot of liabilities involved. So, first right. thing I'll so do that, is and start a business. Start a business. Okay. So, I mean, let's get, let's get that out of the way. All right. So, CPA, lawyer, all right, that's, that's the easy stuff. What's the first thing on your mind that you, that you want to do with it? You mentioned business, uh, right? Yep, I do. Yeah. What do you, uh, what do you think about doing? So I am kind of involved in a little bit of ag, so I want to start a little these little farm uh, farming communities in the suburban areas. Um, start these little farm cafes, you know, farm to table cafes, and that's just one of my goals, you know. So hopefully, I mean, oh, that's awesome. That's after, uh, I, yeah, the military. I'll pursue that career path. We'll see how it yeah. goes. That's awesome, Leo. Uh, when you say ag, you meant agriculture, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, what's the second thing you would do? Uh, probably donate to a lot of charities, or maybe uh, start my own charity. Um, I'm always willing to uh, wanting to help younger uh, youths out there and uh, promote education. And because growing up, you know, our parents didn't really know much, and they really didn't have much to teach us. And I want to teach them uh, financial education so they can manage all uh, the finance of their of the lives because i i think believe that's very important for us to learn and they don't teach us that in school yeah yeah so all right um appreciate you coming on the show uh hey congrats to you um uh, thanks for inspiring uh some of us um <clears throat> that inspired me a lot when i first saw it i was like wow you know uh, one of our guys did it you know so you know so uh congrats to you and uh too um i don't know what else to do uh, other than say hey thanks for your service and appreciate you coming on the show and uh hope to hear from you uh if people want to get a hold of you can they just contact you through facebook or is there do you, are you have anything to, uh for them to contact you through oh uh, yeah they can uh, contact me on my uh, facebook feed or they can shoot me an email here um i'll type it up here on the feed here see if it shows up okay and uh we can put in the show notes as well and uh god just saying a lot thank you i mean give them some likes if you guys give some likes uh that'd be that'd be cool just to uh just to say hey you know you guys saw the show uh 
guys doing one heck of a, uh, a thing, saving lives out there. So um, that's it, man. Hey, appreciate you coming. Uh, guys, uh, thanks for joining, and good night. So uh, until then, uh, guys, keep hustling. Thanks, G. Well, thank you, Chai. Thank you for your time. I thank you uh, for your patience on your uh, show here. I thank you, for everybody, for your support. Yeah, yeah. All right. Good night, guys. All right. Have a good night.